All right, today we're looking at the import range formula, which allows you to get data from one spreadsheet to another. We're gonna start with the basics and then I'll show you some other tips and tricks on how to use this. So we have here a data set and we want to pull it over to here. So all we need to do is grab this ID. You can grab the whole URL if you like. I like to keep just ID to keep it nice and short and simple. So we're just gonna do that and then come over here. We're gonna open our import range and then we're gonna paste that ID and then we just need that tab name and then a one through n. So the first time you do this, you're gonna see this pop up and this will happen the first time you try to connect to a specific spreadsheet. So we'll click allow access and then that data comes in. So now we can do some formatting if we like to make it match what we have in the other one and so forth. All right, so that was pretty simple, but let's look at a case where we want to only pull in certain data. So let me just format this real quick. Let's say we only want to pull in certain product names. So in this import range, we can use a couple different techniques. So one is using the query formula. So we'll just type in query in front of our import range and then we'll select our criteria here. So we'll do select all where if you use the query, you may be used to using A, B, C, etc. When you use an import range or an array literal, which is a different one, um, you have to use the column numbers. So in this case, we'll do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So we'll do call seven equals to ninja power jump. And we'll close this out. Uh, put one as our header. And there you go. Now we just have those ninja power jump. And then when that pulls in, we could then even do by state. So we could do, this is column, let me just type this in, 13. So we could do, and column 13 equals to Illinois, for example. And now we have our four results. So that's how you can do that using the query formula. Another one that you can use is the filter function. So let's get rid of this query and then do filter. So the thing with filter that makes it a little more confusing is you have to basically repeat this import range because filter, you do your range and then you do your conditions. So for each condition then, you have to pull this in again. And so for example, in this case, if we wanted to do um, G equals ninja power jump, and then we have to do that. And now it's obviously not recording the first one because that first one doesn't have, it's not equal to that. And it doesn't have a way in filter to uh, have a header row like you do in query. So this does work, but you do have to repeat that import range each time you want to add a condition. So one way to get around that potentially is to bring in your data into one tab and then use a new tab with your filter to filter based on that data. So that may be easier than repeating this import range multiple times. All right, so at the beginning of this, I just wanted to show you one more thing. Uh, we had to authorize access the first time we did this in. And so some people will ask, is there a way to get around that where you don't have to do that when you add an import range? So there is a way to do that. It does reduce the security. So if you have um, sensitive data, you may not want to do that. But one thing you can do is if you do this to anyone with the link can view. Now let's go ahead and do this in a new sheet and we'll do our import range again. Data. Let's do L there. So now because we changed the permissions to view access for anyone, you notice I did not have to authorize the input. So um, that is a way to get around that, but uh, it means if anyone has this ID, they could potentially access that data. Um, and they couldn't manipulate it, change it or anything like that, but they will be able to view it. So just keep that in mind. If you have sensitive data, this is a way to get around having to authorize the import, um, but it does make you potentially, um, if someone shared this 
ID that other people could view that data. All right, so that is it for today. I hope that helps you to be able to use import range on your own projects to be able to import data from one spreadsheet to another. If this video was helpful, make sure to like and subscribe. And make sure to check out our other videos for more tutorials on Google Sheets and Google Apps Script.